Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rob, and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing the SVS Prime Satellite 5.1 speaker system. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. <laughs> Now before we get started, I just want to say, if you're new to the channel and you want to learn more about audio, home theater, and the latest trends in technology, then you really should consider subscribing. Again, this is the Prime Satellite 5.1 surround sound package, which retails for $999 in black ash and $1199 for the gloss black or gloss white finishes. I think that's a great price point for people looking to get into home theater, but don't want to spend thousands of dollars to do it. The speakers came packed in this large box that's filled with a bunch of smaller boxes that securely house all of the speakers. Inside the smaller boxes, you get one SB1000 subwoofer, along with five Prime Satellite Bookshelf speakers. SVS also sent us these prime elevation speakers that would be perfect if you're wanting to upgrade to a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos setup. And we'll be doing a complete review on these as well, so keep your eye out for that video. Starting with the SB1000 subwoofer, you get a front firing 12 inch high excursion driver in a 13 by 13 by 14 inch enclosure, powered by a Sledge Class D amplifier rated at 300 watts RMS and 720 watts peak output. And the whole thing weighs in at 27 pounds. This sub also has a frequency response of 24 to 260 hertz, so it should have no problem reproducing all but the lowest of bass notes. The amplifier functions include volume control, phase control, low pass filter, audio standby, an auto trigger input, line level inputs and outputs, high level inputs, an on off switch, and a power cord input. There's also an LED on the front that lights up red when the sub is in standby and blue when the sub is active. This light is bright enough that it can be seen through the cloth grill, but it could be a little distracting in a dark room. Now I really like the looks of this sub, especially in the gloss black. But if you're not a fan, as I mentioned before, they also come in gloss white and black ash finishes. I also like the small footprint of this SB1000. In fact, when I first saw this sub, I was amazed at how they were able to get a 12 inch driver into such a small box. So if you're working with a limited amount of space, this would be a great subwoofer to consider. And we'll be doing a full review of it in the future, so keep a lookout for that. Moving on to the Prime satellites, the cabinet dimensions are 8.75 inches high by 4.9 inches wide by 6 inches deep and they weigh in at 6.5 pounds. They have a 1 inch aluminum dome tweeter with an optimized metal mesh diffuser, a 4.5 inch mid-range driver, and a nice looking cloth grill with pin and cup retention. Around the back of the speaker we have a 5 way binding post a quarter inch threaded mounting point, a slotted wall mount, and the rear port. All the testing we did on this system was in my living room, which is 20 by 16 feet, and very open to the rest of the house. The receiver we used is the Yamaha RX V663, rated at 95 watts per channel at 8 ohms, and all the source material was played through the Sony UBP X800 4K Blu-ray player. The prime satellites were placed on these stands and connected to the receiver with 14 gauge wire and banana plugs. We also placed one of the prime satellites here in the entertainment cabinet to be used as the center channel. The remaining two speakers were placed in the rear of the room on top of my existing surround sound speakers and connected the same way as the fronts. We then connected the SB1000 using an RCA from the receiver's LFE output to the sub's LFE input. We also set the low pass filter to the LFE settings. And after setting the receiver's crossover to 80 Hz, we started our testing with the movie Warcraft. This is the first fight scene between the humans and the orcs. <laughs> Yeah. 
And I have to say, this little system did a great job separating all the different effects that were going on. The presence and clarity made you feel like you were right in the middle of the battle, and the SB-1000 was also pretty amazing with this scene. Reproducing tight, visceral bass that was there when it was supposed to be, and was able to stop on a dime when the action was over. The next movie in the list is Overlord. The first 10 minutes is packed full of deep bass from the bomber's engines, anti-aircraft shells exploding around the planes, as well as the soldiers' voices inside the plane. Hello, ladies. Hold the seat stay calm. We jump when the light tells us. It's scenes like these that will bring out the weaknesses of your system, but the SVS did an awesome job at separating the dialogue from all the other sounds. Not once did I find myself struggling to hear what was being said in the plane, even through all the explosions and chaos that was going on around them. And, as I said, there's also a lot of bass in this scene, so if your sub isn't up to the task, the sound can quickly become bloated and confusing. But not with the SB-1000. It handled the bass superbly and never sounded out of control. I did have a slight problem, though. All of the metal wall decorations we have in our living room started rattling. So be aware that this sev has more than enough output to do that. Next, we threw in Shazam and went to the scene in the cave where the younger, yet-to-be Shazam, meets the elder Shazam. Oh, the world has. My magic must be passed on. No. Speak my name. And I was really impressed with the way the SVS system made it feel like we were actually in a cave. The characters' voices sounded three-dimensional, and when the Elder Shazam slammed his staff on the ground, the sound reverberated through my entire living room. Another movie I really like to use to test speakers is X-Men Dark Phoenix. And although the whole movie has a lot of action, the scene I really like to use the most is the fight scene on the train. This part of the movie has a bit of everything going on. From helicopters flying around shooting 50 caliber machine guns, to huge fight scenes between the aliens and the X-Men, combined with giant explosions and the sound of the rail cars being crushed flat as pancakes, all happening while the train roars down the tracks at high speed. Alright, the last movie we're going to mention here is Fury. Now I know we seem to be using this movie a lot in our tests, and that's because this particular scene is so dynamic, with the sound of machine guns and explosions going off, while the tanks cross an open field being shot at with anti-tank guns, it's just done so well that I feel like we need to demo it. And with all the other movies we tested, the SVS speakers did a remarkable job keeping everything sounding detailed and controlled without becoming harsh or overpowering. So, in our opinion, this SVS Prime Satellite System is really good for movies, and whether you're just getting into home theater or you need a small system with a small footprint, you just can't go wrong for $1,000. But, not only is this a great setup for movies, it's also really good for music as well. Going through our demo tracks playlist, we found ourselves really enjoying the sound coming out of these speakers. Whether it be in two-channel audio or 5.1 surround, they all sounded great. In fact, I was really surprised at how SVS was able to make such a small system that sounds this good. Okay, up until now, we've been looking at a 5.1 system, which is a great starting point for getting into home theater, but, what if you want to step it up a bit and get into Dolby Atmos? Well, as I already mentioned, SVS was nice enough to send us these prime elevation speakers. These are designed to be mounted on walls or ceilings and come with special mounting hardware that makes it easy to do so. They're very similar to the prime satellites, so they should be an exact tonal match. The main difference between the prime elevations and the prime satellites would be this slope on the front. 
This angle makes it possible to aim the speakers toward the listening position so everyone in the room can get the full Atmos experience. And of course, we'll be doing a full review of these prime elevation speakers in the near future, so keep a lookout for that if you're interested. So, the SVS Prime Satellite 5.1 is a great little system, and I really enjoyed the time I had with it during this review. And like I said, for $1,000, you really can't go wrong. Now with that said, let's talk about who I'd recommend the system to. Well, first off, the system would be great for somebody using their TV speakers or a sound bar and wants to get into surround sound without breaking the bank. If that maybe sounds like you, this would be a great choice. Or if you just don't have the room for big tower speakers because your place is too small, this system would also fit the bill. I would also recommend this system to someone that doesn't want to spend a lot of money but wants a good quality surround sound system. At just $999 for the 5.1 setup, you could easily spend another $500 for an Atmos receiver and then throw in a set of SVS Prime Elevations for just $400 and you'd end up with an awesome 5.1.2 Atmos system for under $2,000 that I guarantee will blow away any sound bar or home theater in a box you can buy right now. So, in conclusion, the SVS 5.1 Prime Satellites are great speakers, and I highly recommend them. If you want to find out more about SVS and their products, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you have any questions about the products we reviewed here today, let us know in the comments below, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, have an awesome day.